So in yesterday's class, we had discussed about uh, the fast transistor logic as to how uh, we will be using two fast transistors, okay, and uh, how a two is to one mux can be implemented, okay. So how do we know that it's two is to one mux? Because we have the select lines, okay. Select lines are nothing but your gates, uh, which is uh, the low and high, S bar and S. And uh, since they are in parallel, they will get added. So A into S bar plus B into S, right? So this was what we had discussed yesterday. Right. So today we will look into uh, four is to one max. Okay. Just like how we saw two is to one, uh, we'll be having instead of uh, two, we will be having uh, four uh, multiplexers. Okay. So we will look into them. Fast transistor multiplexers can be built uh, using transmission gates or known NMOS type of switch. Okay. So the reason why I have kept here as uh, known NMOS is because you know this uh, can be only built using NMOS. Okay. That's the meaning of it. In terms of pure logic functionality, these are interchangeable. They both pass or block an input signal based on the state of the control signal. So just like how we have seen previously, so this becomes our control signal, S and S bar. So if this is open, if we give sufficient supply, uh, so if we talk about the threshold voltage, Vt, okay, for silicon, it's about 0.7, and for germanium, it's about 0.3, right? So if we use uh, these transistors, and once they pass the threshold voltage, which means the transistor turns on. So how do I say that the transistor is turned on? The region between the source and the drain, there's a channel. Okay, So this, when this channel is formed, there can be information passing between source to drain. If not, it is like cutting of the channel. If the channel is cut off, there is no passing of values uh, from input side to the output side or from one terminal to the other terminal, to be precise. Okay, the, the transmission gate provides superior electrical performance. The reason why it gives a superior electrical performance is because you know uh, delays are less because of less number of transistors and it is uh, not connected to VDD and uh, ground. Okay. The 4 is to 1 MUX uses NMOS switches mostly because the resulting diagram is more straightforward. Okay. NMOS transistor is more or less a placeholder for whatever type of pass or block element is used in the actual circuit. Now, the applications where we'll be using them when we preferred implementation, if you want to experiment with these circuits in the lab, you could even replace FETs. So I have just put up this point so that you, know, you will know as to what to replace. So what I'm telling here, instead of using your uh, NMOS or MOS transistors here, you can replace this with FETs, field effect transistors. Okay, and you can try and understand as to what kind of outputs that you are going to get. So ABCD is going to be our inputs. Okay, and uh, zero, zero, 0, Sir, what is a low NMOS type of switch? NMOS is, you know, remember the spoke of uh, CMOS logic, right? No, sir, what is a lone NMOS type of switch? Known means only, only NMOS type of switch. Okay. Only N NMOS type of switch. So all the uh, transistors which are used will be NMOS type only. Ha, normally we will use an NMOS. The reason we have discussed yesterday, because the NMOS uh, transistors have majority carriers as electrons and electrons are much faster than holes, right? So that's the reason we stick with majority of the implementations with NMOS. PMOS also can be done, but it wouldn't be that efficient that uh, performing as NMOS, okay? Right. So here we have all the combinations, okay? We have 0, 0, 1, 0, uh, 0, 1, and 1, 1, all the combinations. So based on these combinations, suppose if 0, 0 is selected, then what is going to happen? A will be passing to my output y. Similarly, if 1, 1 is selected, D will be passing to my y. Now, you should remember that these transistors are acting like a switch here, okay? 
how is it acting like a switch um, if you can uh, recall we had studied the transistor right the cmos technology in our uh, i think uh, first module right yeah first module where we spoke of uh, nmos pmos and cmos implementations right so it is like when this gate is activated or when we give potential to this gate okay or when this is selected then the switch is on so if the switch is on whatever values are here it will pass through if this switch is on whatever values are here will pass through so ultimately a is passing through and it appears across y similarly if i take 0 1 or if i if my select lines are given with 0 1 then c is going to get selected because this is across its input so it passes through the transistors and it comes as my output y Fine. So the same thing I mentioned here. Okay. Um, zero, zero, one, zero, zero, one, one, one. Okay. So now one more important thing to keep in mind here is that we have a bar, right? So in order to have an inverted signal, we we normally need an inverter because whatever signal is given, if I want to uh, lower the signal or make the signal opposite. Okay, I will use an inverter. We usually consider the inverter to be disadvantage associated with the use of transmission gates instead of NMOS switches. But in this case, even with NMOS implementation, it needs the help of inverters. So you're able to understand, students, why we need an inverter. It's because we need to give a lower value here, lower potential here. So in order to give a lower potential internally, okay, internally, it will be connected with an inverter. So even though we say that this is a complete NMOS implementation, but still we are making use or we, we are taking the help of uh, inverters. In other words, a low logic select signal is used not only for blocking, but also for passing. And a logic high select signal is used not only for passing but also for blocking. Thus, we need inverters. So, for this bar, okay, blocking and passing, we need inverters. Any doubts, students here? Till this concept, any doubt? Okay. okay, thank you. So, next we will look into designing fast transistor multiplexers. The general idea with uh, PTL multiplexers is to configure uh, series connected switches in such a way that it gives a combination of S input passes, one of the input signals to the output node. Okay. So, just like how we had previously with uh, uh, you know NMOS transistors. Okay, here I'm using both NMOS and PMOS. Okay, so it's a combination of both NMOS and PMOS transistors. Okay. If there are four inputs as above, you need to you need two control signals, right? If I have 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, then I will need S1 and S0 as my control signals or as my select lines. If there are eight inputs, you need three control signals. And uh, remember, we had the formula 2 raised to n, where n is the number of control signals. Previously, we have seen that. Yeah. Here, here you can see that your 2 raised to n inputs. OK. And uh, n is going to be your number of select lines. If there are uh, four inputs, then uh, if there are two, four inputs, as the boy, you will need two control signals. And uh, yeah, if there are eight inputs, then we will need three transistors and so forth. Yeah, so we are following the rule of two raised to n. 
the 4 to 1 fast transistor logic multiplexer needs switches that pass a signal when the controlling voltage is low. This can be achieved uh, by using an inverted version of a selected signal. But if we use a PMOS devices or active low switches, we could eliminate the inverters. So what I'm doing here now, now in the previous one, we had used only NMOS. And since I needed a low value here, so I was using an inverter. So in, in our next implementation, what we will try doing is we will try to use uh, only NMOS and PMOS and we will eliminate the use of inverters. A PMOS plus NMOS solution would look like this. Okay. So PMOS, because this will be uh, active for low values, right? Isn't it students, PMOS, it's active for low values, right? We have discussed this in our first module. Can you recall those? And if I give high value, NMOS is going to turn on. If I give zero, then PMOS is going to turn on, right? So instead of using an inverter, now I will replace them with my PMOS structures, with my PMOS strips. So wherever there is a low value, okay, you can see a bubble and that's a PMOS. So here this is an NMOS and you see a bubble, it's a PMOS. So that's the easiest way to differentiate between an NMOS and a PMOS, okay? So high values, so here what we are doing, high values we are giving to NMOS, low values we are giving to PMOS. Is that clear students? Any doubts still here? But sir, the function of this uh, combination as well as the previous combination is the same only, right? Yeah, it is the same. The only thing that we are doing here is, um, remember I had told you that we will be using inverter for low values. Here it was S0 bar and S1 bar, right? So instead of using an inverter, I will directly use a PMOS. Okay, yes, Okay, so, so this is like you know having an inverter as well as a transistor both so why am i doing this because your PMOS transistors will uh, will be sensitive to lower values okay so directly i can just give lower values here and these two transistors will get activated so once it's activated it acts like a switch the switch is on a is passed to y y is equal to a so wherever there are low values, I will make use of PMOS and wherever there are high values, I will make use of NMOS. So is this clear till this concept? Can I proceed? Yes, sir. So, so yeah. So this would be a functional circuit. The NMOS version would be preferred in real-time applications um, because I've told you PMOS transistors are more bulkier, they are heavy, and uh, they do not have electrons as their majority carrier. So due to which their uh, you know uh, transmission becomes too slow. So so even if I give an input, okay, it would not appear in real time uh, towards the output side. Okay, so that's the issue of using a PMOS circuit. So even though in our previous version, we are making use of NMOS as well as an inverter, I will go with this because we need something which works out fast. So we have to work out with numbers. So if this is giving us good values, okay, if this is able to um, help us with, uh, you know, getting high propagation uh, values, which means there is no propagation, delay at all then i will go with this and i wouldn't prefer using the pmos structure so for your reference i have kept it here that electrons have higher mobility and uh, the performance the electrical performance of nmos transistor okay is superior okay uh, in fact you know if i talk about with numbers uh, these nmos transistors are about uh, two to three times Okay, faster than your P type of transistors, than your PMOS. Okay, so NMOS transistors are two and up to three times faster than your P type of transistors. So you should make note of this point in your notes. 
So in PMOS, the majority uh, carriers are poles, okay? and uh, as we saw, that uh, they are slower, right, due to the density. This issue is especially relevant to multiplexer designs because the use of PMOS devices would introduce not only inferior performance, which means low performance, but also inconsistent performance. So how is it inconsistent? The input to output electrical characteristics of the input lines would vary according to how many of each lines or it can pass or block the elements are P transistors. So what we are trying to say here is, if there are more PMOS transistors, okay, so this is going to add up my delay. Why is it adding up my delay? Because it is not made up of the majority carriers are not electrons, but then it is holes, right? So due to which I will have uh, my performance hampered. So it's preferred to use NMOS transistors. So the next thing that we will look into is uh, your two is to one mux. Okay, how we will uh, realize the different logics. Okay, when I say different logics, and or not. Okay, NAND, NOR, XOR, XNOR. So all these logics, how can we implement using two is to one mux? So this is a very important concept which will be asked for your examinations and interviews. Okay, so if a question is asked, what is a multiplexer? Okay. So this is going to be your answer. Uh, two raised to n input mux has n select lines and uh, mux, yeah, n select lines. It can be used to implement logic functions by implementing LUT. So you will be studying more about this on, uh, next year, uh, sorry, in your next semester, your fourth semester is a subject called uh, HDL, system design using HDL, hardware descriptive language, okay? So there you will be exclusively studying on how to implement your LUTs, lookup tables. Now, um, how do you use a dictionary? Can someone tell me, you have a dictionary, Okay, so how do we use it? If we have to look up for a word, how do we use it? I am expecting for an answer. We just search it according to the letter that starts. Yes, so, so we have a rule there, right? So we look for the alphabetical order. And as per the alphabetical order, okay, I will be searching it one by one. Suppose I got A, okay. So next, again, the letter after that, the second one is also going to be A, A, okay. Then it's going to be A, B, then A, C, right? So this is going to be the rule, right? So here, our multiplexers are also uh, used for looking up uh, that sort of information. In our electronic systems, okay, uh, multiplexers are used to search things. Right. A two input mux can implement two input function. A four input mux can implement any three input and eight input mux can implement any four input function and so on. This property of muxes makes FPG implementation, implement programmable hardware with the help of LUT muxes. LUTs are nothing but just think of bookmarks. Okay, uh, bookmarks are used to keep, okay, wherever uh, you wish to, so that you can get back as soon as you see the uh, bookmark, right? So it is like a marking that you do, right? Uh, you can actually place it inside your book. And whenever you open up your book, wherever the bookmark is, you can start reading from there. So these lookup tables are used in the same fashion. Okay, so here uh, you can check that uh, the property of these uh, MOXs, okay, will help us actually implement your programmable hardware uh, with the help of LUTs. Okay, so what we are going to see, we'll see AND, OR, NAND, NOR, XOR, XNOR, using MOX. Sir, what is FPG? 
FPJ is field programmable gate arrays. Okay, just make note of it. So in your next semester, fourth semester, you'll be studying in detail on FPGAs, lookup tables. Okay, just make note all of your FPGA field programmable gate array. So in order to program uh, the FPGAs, we will use a potential. Okay, we will use a voltage. So that's why it's called field. Okay, field programmable gate array. So it's an array of gates. Gates are your, your transistors. So it's an array group. And it can be programmed. P is programmed uh, using field. Okay, so field programmable gate arrays. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Just like how we have a family of uh, CMOS. Similarly, these, this is a different family called SPG. Okay. <clears throat> So the first one here we will be looking into is AND gate. Okay, so all of you see carefully. The first thing that you'll have to do is um, get your truth table. Okay, 00011011. So AND gate output we all know, right? 00 gives me 0, 0, 01 also gives me 0, 10. Zero. Anything with 0 is 0. So the only value here, high, is for my 1, 1. Okay, now what I want you to do is I want you to compare the values of output with input. So you have to come up with a relationship now. So output is equal to zero when A is equal to zero. So that's the observation I have done. So whenever A is zero, my output is zero. Okay, then when output, output is equal to B when A is equal to one. So just see. When A is equal to zero, okay, my output is zero. Then when A is equal to one, A is equal to one has two cases. When A is equal to one, the output is nothing but equal to the value in B. So zero, one, zero, one. So are you all able to understand this relationship now? Observe clearly. Are you all able to understand this? Students, do you have doubts? Have you seen this table? Sir, can it be written the other way around? Like for example, output is equal to A if B is equal to one. If B output is equal to A, uh, okay, then uh, for the other case, how will you say? So the other case would be if B is equal to zero, then output is uh, B. Hmm. Yeah, you can do that also. That's fine. Ultimately, we are coming up with relationships between the inputs and outputs. That also can be done. Okay. So here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use um, these values here. Okay. These values which are mentioned here. Output is equal to zero. When is zero. So here, what I'm trying to do is sign. I'm trying to use A as my uh, switch. Uh, A as my select line. Okay. A is equal to zero, A is equal to one. I'm using this as my select line. And accordingly, I will be uh, implementing my MUX. So see, A is, if A is your select line here. Then when A is equal to zero, okay, what is my output? It's always grounded. So when I say grounded, what kind of outputs can I expect? Low values or high values? Low values. Low values, right. So which means my input is grounded 
for value zero. So when a is equal to zero, zero passes through to my output. So this first case is solved. The next case, when a is equal to one, the output should be equal to b. So when a is one, the output should be equal to b. So this is how I draw or I implement the mux for a and bit. Okay, so this is your normal symbol a, b, and output. And uh, if you use this also, it will function like a and bit. Right? Is that clear? Students, any doubts here? Any doubts? Can I proceed to the next gate? Any doubts, okay. please ask. Yeah, any doubts? No, sir, no doubt. Okay, fine. So we will go to the next one, which is our NAND gate. Okay. So as usual, you're going to put up your uh, fourth table. Okay. And you're going to see the relationship between uh, the inputs and the outputs. So here, if you can observe, output is equal to one when a is equal to zero, right? Then output is equal to b bar zero, one, one, zero. Output is equal to b bar when a is equal to one, right? So once we have this, this is uh, creating, this is important. Uh, so same thing, a is used as my select line, zero. When I select zero, then whatever is at my input, VDD, which means high value, or you can even write it as one. I prefer writing VDD. So that will be passed across my output. So when A is equal to one, B bar, whatever is given as B, the complemented version, which means there will be an inverter here. So B, inverter, then this is connected. Okay. So let me just draw, hopefully it comes out right. So we'll have B and that will be connected to an inverter. And this value is actually going to be connected here. So that is my B bar. Okay. So having the values of, you know, this is very much important. So once I have these values, uh, then, you know, it's, it's going to be very easy for us to um, implement our MUX. Ultimately, what we are trying to do here is we are trying to keep uh, A, okay, A as my select line. So A is used as my select line and whatever are my inputs, okay, whatever is given based on what select line, those will be appearing at my output. So which means keeping, suppose I invert, suppose I keep uh, zero here, Okay, uh, it's not visible. Suppose I keep zero here and one here. Will it be correct, students? Will my mux function as an NAND gate? Sir, will it become NOR? you have to work it out. You have to work it out and we will see how it's going to be. Okay. So which means we have to put a, a truth table and we have to come out with a relationship. So we will see. Okay. Fine. So we will see if it's going to work out as a norm or not. So my question here was, if I reverse the zero and one, will it function as NAND? If I only swap my zero and one. Will it function as NAND? Yes, no, sir, it won't. It won't, right? Okay, that is because my inputs are the same here, right? VDD is there and B bar. So if I have to swap this, 
I will even have to interchange this also. This also needs to be interchanged. Then only it will function as my NAND gate. If not, no, not happening. Okay. So now we will look into OR gate. Similarly, what you do, you have your input combinations are the same, just that your output values are going to change. So OR will have zero triple one, right? And uh, when A is zero, okay, it is following B. And when A is equal to one, uh, the output is always one. Okay. So A, when I give zero, then what is going to happen? And I should get B. So when A is equal to one, okay, then my input is my VDD here. So the same thing comes out as my output. Okay. So similarly, I want you all to implement the remaining gates. Okay. Uh, we have discussed uh, and, NAND, or, so still you can implement NOR, XOR, XNOR. Okay, so try implementing all of this, and uh, we will uh, we will get back in the next session. Right. So we were discussing about this um, implementation of uh, the basic gates, and I hope some of you have uh, done it. Right. So for NOR gate, what equation are you getting sign? Have you done it? Is this the one that you're getting? Yes, sir. Not? Yeah. Okay. Uh, similarly, for uh, X nor, X nor, can someone tell me what are we getting for X nor? Moana. Moana. Can you tell me what you're getting for X naught? For now, Varshita. So for x naught, uh, output is equal ah. to b when a is equal to zero. Output and uh, output is equal to b bar when a is equal to one. X naught, just check. See, we should be getting this now. A is uh, zero, then it's it's the reverse actually. Oh, you're telling for xor, not x naught, right? Is it? For xor. Ah, xor. Xor, then it's fine because it's going to be the reverse of this, right? So B bar will come here and B will go. There. Yeah. So this is going to be for your um, X nor. Okay. X nor. So the opposite of X or value. So when A is equal to zero, two zeros, right? I am going to get the opposite value of B bar. And when A is equal to one, I'm going to get the output seen as B. So max implementation and your uh, logical representation. So XOR, we're going to get the reverse. Yes, as the friend also has worked it out. Then NOT gate, okay? So this is going to be for NOT gate, right? So when I select A is equal to zero, then one is going to come. When I select A is equal to one, then zero is going to come. So this is all about a little bit of creativity. Don't you think so? Don't you think so? This is a little bit of creativity using MUX and implementing your logic gates. Right? The only thing is you'll have to have a keen uh, attention um, on the values which are on your input side and output side. Okay? Fine. So, so we have actually completed your uh, module two and we will be moving on to 
uh, module three, which is called sequential circuits. Sequential circuits. So I will just give you an introduction to sequential circuits, and uh, after which, okay, uh, we will be seeing that in the upcoming class. So the name of your module three is sequential circuits. Okay. And uh, the first one is going to be, the first topic is going to be your sequential circuit model. Okay. So we will just see uh, the definition of your uh, sequential circuits. Okay. So I think you all know what's the difference between combinational and sequential. Can someone tell me? What's the difference? Okay. So combinational circuits do not have any memory. Okay. And your sequential logic, um, it, it takes the properties of combination and it adds memory to it. So combinational plus memory becomes my sequential circuits. Without memory, it just becomes a combination circuit. So, so these sequential circuits are an advanced version, or I can say it is a better version of combination circuits. So combination circuits do not have any memory. Okay, sequential imply, uh, implies that uh, events are ordered in time that one event then the other occurs, separated by time. The time separation of events in digital logic requires the use of memory. Two types of sequential logic exist, synchronous and asynchronous. So you should make a bifurcation here. Okay, circuits, two types, that is your combinational and sequential. Then again in sequential, you will have your uh, synchronous and asynchronous. Okay, so maybe what you can do in the side, Okay, you can you can put as circuits, and uh, you know these are having two bifurcations. What are those? What are those? Your combinational. Okay, and then your sequential. Now again, your sequential will have two types, right? So one is your Synchronous type and the other one is your um, asynchronous type. Okay, so just make a neat representation of this in your uh, notebooks. Okay, fine. So models provide a means to represent an idea, concept or process mathematically or graphically. The two main components of sequential circuits are uh, combinational logic and storage or memory. The two are related as in the figure, right? So if you see this figure, okay, this is going to help us understand as to what is your combinational and what is your sequential. So you will have inputs ranging from I naught to I n. Okay. So these are your inputs. So inputs are given to combinational logic. Then your outputs are going to be from output zero, okay, to output m. So n number of inputs, m number of outputs. So this was the only thing that your combinational circuits were capable of doing. Right now. What we are doing is we are adding memory. Okay, we are adding memory elements. So the outputs are given to memory, and part of them, okay, part of them are also fed as inputs. So these are called state variables. Okay, state variables. So it would be nice if you all make note of this, okay, so that you can have a practice of it, and also 
uh, it would be easy for you to represent in the examinations. So states can vary from uh, S0 to SX. Okay, similarly memories from M0 to MX. Okay, and your excitation variables. Now keep in mind these terms are very important. Okay, state variables, excitation variables, and uh, your inputs, outputs, memory elements, all these are very important for the upcoming modules. Okay, especially for the fourth and fifth module, these concepts are going to be extensively used. Okay, fine.